Hi, I'm Tim Colbago, CEO of Image IQ, with some innovative ideas on how you can use your preclinical imaging data to power your clinical trial. So your preclinical work is done, and you're ready to embark on the exciting world of clinical trials for your next phase of your product development. Now, one of the biggest challenges you'll have is in dealing with the increased complexity in that clinical trial environment, the increased cost, and all that translational work that needs to be done. Well, one of the things that we've seen that we wanted to share with you today is if you plan correctly in your preclinical trial, how you can take some of that data and that work you've done and use that to actually save you money in your clinical trial. So how does that work? Well, maybe the best way to tell you is by example. Let's say you are running a preclinical trial and you've had several hundred specimens that you've analyzed and in the process you've taken images, whether they're histology or MR or micro CT. You're able to analyze those images with a software package and in doing that you actually produced a very good statistically significant understanding of the variability that's in the image because you've got such a large sample size and a very controlled and hopefully multimodality cross-correlated set of data. What's, a, what's so exciting about that? Well, let's say you know that you're going to see just 5% variability in the imaging. You can use that data, get that to your biostatisticians when you start powering your clinical trial and say, listen, if you look at this data, I know that on these imaging modalities with the product and technology that I'm working on, I'm only going to see 5% variability. Your biostats team will take that data and factor that into the powering of your clinical trial. So for example, we've actually seen that a 5% reduction in variability in that preclinical phase because of consistent imaging can result in up to 10 to 20% less patients required in the clinical trial because you're aware of the image variability, you've used the same software methodology, and therefore you've proven the variability. That's a very, very powerful concept that I think is just starting to catch on in the med device and pharmaceutical industries as they start to look at holistic product development life cycles from the perspective of reducing costs and also improving the science. So using consistent imaging acquisition protocols will get you a smaller cohort size, but we've also seen something else that's equally powerful. Using automated image analysis will reduce your cohort size even further since the observer variability will be essentially eliminated. I'm sure you're aware that many clinical trials suffer from difficulty in recruiting patients. So when you put consistent imaging protocols and analysis together, you not only save time and money, you materially increase the probability of the overall success of your trial. Now I know, what you might be thinking is, how in the world can I translate all that preclinical imaging work to the clinical world? Well, even though you're using high resolution or high field imaging due to the smaller subjects in your preclinical work, clinical scanners at lower resolutions may still be relevant because the anatomy scales. The ultimate comparison you need to make is the ability to take a sample, say a cadaver specimen, and scan it using both clinical and preclinical systems to really see if you're losing information in the analysis. That's something your imaging CRO should be able to do for you. We've seen this translational imaging concept work in several cases. So perhaps you can start thinking through how you might be able to implement this as you launch your next product into its clinical trial. Hopefully you can make that work for you. We go into more detail about how to leverage the images and protocols from your preclinical work in the design of your clinical trial imaging in a white paper. We'd love to share the paper with you, so visit us at our Imaging Analytics University website and download a copy for yourself.